This is part two of the Major Arcana of the Morgan Greer deck. And we are up to card six, which is the Lovers. And this is a union um, between masculine and feminine, a coming together of uh, two parts, yin-yang. Um, and it also can mean, in a Tarot reading, um, the coming together or a union of... Um, two people as well. So the coming together of the masculine and the feminine. The masculine being the doing energy and the feminine being that expectancy, that, that time that you wait for the manifestation. So it's a completion for manifestation. Moving along, we have card number seven. This is this will complete the first septenary. Card number seven is the chariot. This indicates travel, fast travel. A chariot moves quickly. Notice we have a black horse here and a white horse. Whatever falls on this side of the reading, when you do a reading, this could be the negative aspects related to movement or a trip or things that come swiftly, travel. The white horse would indicate the positive aspects of the reading. And when things fall right in between, it's the integrated and you could look for the good and bad. Um, the black horse would be um, like misfortune with the white horse in the reading would be uh, the positive aspects. But this is a swift, fast-moving um, energy. Okay, that completes the first septenary. Let's go to Strength. This is one of my favorite, favorite cards. I love this card. Um, sorry about that with the camera. Okay, this is Feminine Strength, and this is card number eight. Now, in certain decks, you will find that justice will be in the 8th position and strength will be in the 11th position. So these two may be interchangeable depending upon what deck you um, you receive. I, I do believe in the Aster Crowley deck that uh, he put strength in position number 11 and justice in position 8. What I love about this card is that this is feminine strength. Now, masculine strength is like a hunting energy. When you see, um, how would a man, and I don't mean this offensively or, or um, chauvinistically, but typically, how would a hunter tame the wilderness or a lion? He'd kill it. And the feminine strength is to befriend it, to make friends with it, and then the lion will serve you. So this is this feminine strength that takes it up a notch to a higher octave or a goddess energy. The next um, card in the Major Arcana Second Septenary is the Hermit, card number nine. This, see this guy, he carries his own light. That's, he's alone carrying his own light. He's a seeker. And this is card number nine. Um, this is someone, when it comes up in a reading, um, the person may not have a lot of support, and this may, may be a journey they have to go through alone, a journey within. Wait, hold your ground, and carry your own light. Just carry your own light. Okay, moving on to the Wheel of Fortune. I love this card. This is card number 10. This has to do with karma. It also has to do with, if you notice, the characters are falling off the wheel. Um, it's a bit... And, in the center of the wheel, as the universe turns the wheel, the wheel of karma, in the very center here, not much happens. So when a card like this comes up in a reading, I usually tell my clients to keep your center. Hold your ground. Don't get sucked into the vortexes of what everybody else is doing. Remember your own grounding and your own focus in the matter and, um, to, and to be that fulcrum and balance for yourself. More of a fulcrum. All right. Here comes card number 11, 11 being a master number. So this is a card of, of importance. This is justice and balance. It represents a fair outcome and spiritual balance. It's a positive statement. And you could see the scales here that the justice card holds. And also the sword pointing up. The sword is thought, but because it's pointing up, it's considering a higher thought here. Um, a higher octave of thought in an effort to achieve balance. Now the sword and the scales, the scales are, are, are like Libra and the sword typically um, also is air. So you've got a double air. So this is a lot of thinking, a lot of balanced thought in this card. Positive settlement 
could be even, uh, you know, taken literally, a positive legal settlement depending upon how it falls in the um, in the reading. And re keeping in mind also that um, this is the card justice that oftentimes is put in the um, number eighth position. The in in strength can sometimes be the card that's put in the eleventh position depending upon the the deck. Again, depending upon the deck. Also, if you notice the air, this is this is an important thing. If you notice the use of colors here, you have the scales and you have the sword. But when you look at the, the use of color, when you see the greens and you see the blues, you can think of the water, the earth element, and you see the, the red, the fire, and then you see the veil behind them here. And then more fire. In other words, he does not rule with emotion. He speaks the truth. There's a truth here. So this is a very interesting card, and I could spend hours talking about it, but we're going to move on. All right, the Hanged Man. A lot of people don't like this card. I think this card is a magnificent card. It's number 12, and that's my favorite number. See the guy hanging upside down? This is the crucifixion of the ego. This is decisions and waiting for a new perspective. Often we have that knee-jerk response. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to rush in there. If you hold back and just wait and let your ego back out of it, you can oftentimes come up with a new perspective that is enlightening and spiritual and serves your highest good. So this is wait for new perspective. And it also indicates decisions in the waiting, but not to decide this red-hot second. Okay, moving on to card number 13, which is interesting. This is called death. Now, this is not necessarily a literal death unless it comes up with a combination of cards, which might be like the, um, the Three of Swords and the Five of uh, Swords. Some of the sword cards can indicate a literal death if it comes up with this. But usually this is a, a change, big change. Um, and of something and a beginning of something else because there is no death. So this is a termination, a death, an ending, but there's always a new beginning after the end. So this is something to fear. This is something that inevitably we all have to face and that's, I don't mean literal death, I'm talking about change. That's the one thing we can count on and this is an absolute change. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And remember, when reading the Tarot, nothing is written in stone. Nothing. Everybody has the power to change everything. We're that powerful. Okay, the last card in the second septenary is called Temperance. That's card number 14. And this is a decision or a moderation. Notice the position of the feet. One's on the land and one's in the water. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? Water being the emotion, land being the grounding. Now also if you notice, some interpretations will say that because this path goes in the back and the water's here, it may indicate a blockage if the wrong decision is made. So this has to do with busting through a particular blockage so that the road can be opened. And notice also the person is pouring the water from one cup to another. This is the should I, shouldn't I, balancing of the emotions. Let's put the emotions in this cup. Let's weigh the emotions over here, pouring them back and forth. And this is also like an angel. So there is divine help with this card in the making of a decision when the road seems uh, blocked. So this completes the second septenary of the Major Arcana. Thank you for watching. This is Things Unspoken 111.